What's up guys, today we are in the gym. That's why I'm sweating. I haven't been watching cops. I'm actually in the gym filming. Uh, you can see we got the flag and the squat rack in the background. We are not gonna be working out, however. We're gonna be looking at this guy. This is my uh, seven and a half inch AR with the law folding adapter. There it is on the back. Um, I've had this thing built for maybe six or seven months. It was kind of like a uh, Christmas present slash leftover parts build. Um, but anyway, I haven't done a, uh, a detailed video on the, the parts that went into making it, so since it's been in a few videos lately, I figured uh, now would be a good time to do that. So here it is, uh, a little closer up. This is a seven and a half inch barrel from Ballistic Advantage. It is a stainless barrel. As you can see, that kind of the gray color, maybe. It's a uh, one and eight twist, uh, 223 wild chamber. Um, in front of it is the Call Valley Precision uh, linear comp or linear brake. See, it's got holes in the front. There's no holes around the side of it, um, so it tucks under the handguard pretty well. Uh, that way you can get your hand a little bit closer, not have to worry about it blasting you. Um, it does create a lot of flash, but um, you know, it's just something you live with with a short barrel like this on a 223 or 5.56 bullet. Uh, but it does a great job of blasting all of the, the noise, not noise, but gas and uh, concussion forward away from the shooter. So on top here, you see this Enforce, uh, this is a w, WML uh, Gen 2. This is the smaller one, the one battery version. I think it's maybe 400 lumens. Yep. Now it's got a few different settings on it, um, or different ways you can do the switch. Right now I have it on momentary. I think if you press and hold really quick, it'll lock on. And then if you hold it for more than maybe a half a second, it'll cut back off but anyway um a lot wanted this light on here this used to be on my sbr uh, but i put it on here because i got the streamlight rail mount for the other one and um this light just mounted better than this key mod rail there's not really any rail sections at the uh i guess the 45 degree sections of the rail there's no key mod slots so i had to mount the light on the edge and I don't like that so I just mounted it on top uh, and it worked better this light worked better on this handrail and uh, gun so I went with that uh, the handrail is a where's that there it is I don't know if you can you'll be able to see that it's, uh, Palmetto State oh, it's right there you can probably barely see it uh, it's a Palmetto State um, 9 inch key mod rail uh, it came on a little cheap upper that I got, um, but it works great. Uh, it's got a huge barrel nut. It's about that long, um, so it's real sturdy. And I, I had it laying around uh, from something I wasn't using, and it fit this barrel and this uh, muzzle device really well. If you like that look, it could have been a little bit shorter. I don't like it being all the way to the end, but, you know. already had the hand guard and it worked pretty good. Uh, this is a BCM, the angled, kinesthetic angled something, some fancy science term for the grip. Um, I, just, I like it because, you know, I can, I can get it like this and activate the light. Um, and it gives my hand a place to stop. Um, so I'm not grabbing too far out here. I can just grab up against this. And I like having uh, some sort of hand stop on the bottom so you can push against a barricade. Like if this is your wall, you can push up against and uh, put pressure toward the barricade and give you a little bit of stability. Uh, moving back a little bit, come to here, it's got the uh, Strike Industries. Uh, it's got the Strike Industries, some kind of pivot pins they're supposed to be like lightweight or something they were on sale so I got them 
the, the one in the back is pretty cool. It's got a little, let's see. You might be able to see it. It's got a little ring around it right there so you can get your fingernail in. Um, so once you push it from this side, you know, it gives you a little bit more, it gives you a little bit more to bite on. See right there, it kind of popped up. It gives you a little bit more to grab with your fingernail to take them out. Inside right here, uh, the bolt carrier. This is a Palmetto State bolt carrier. Uh, it's full auto, whatever, tested, rated, MPI, all that cool stuff. Um, I know I, I got BCMs and all my other ones, and I swear by BCM bolts. But uh, I was kind of trying to keep this on a somewhat of a budget. And these are on sale. I got all this stuff around Black Friday and Christmas, so there's pretty good sales on all that. Um, but anyway, I got this bolt carrier because it was on sale, and I figured I'd uh, I always kind of wanted to try one. And I figured, uh, you know, if it held up on a 7.5 inch gun, it would hold up on anything. <clears throat> so I'm going to go with that. If it breaks, um, I'll probably get something better like a, a BCM or a Spike, something like that. I'll go ahead and break this open. Take a look at it. Never mind. Now. Now we can take the bolt out. Alright, so here it is. Uh, it kind of looks a little dry. I run uh, frog lube on them. If it'll focus. There we go. Um, looks a little bit dry. The charging handle is a Strike Industries charging handle. Um, this is just a standard latch, the short one. Uh, the, I'm thinking about getting a bigger one. So she said a bigger latch. Um, this is really having a hard time focusing. A bigger latch because when it goes back in the gun, I'll show you right here with everything closed. You see the hinge for the uh, law adapter is kind of right in the way. Um, it's not a huge deal, but you know it can be a little issue sometimes. There, you can see about how far that sticks out and where the handle is. They make an extended latch for this charging handle, so I might go with that later. Uh, I think it's just a simple swap, take the roll pin out, change the latch, whatever. Um, all right, on top for the optic, this is a Primary Arms um, Advanced Red Dot. It's the one with the, the knob on the side that you can turn. A lot of them have the buttons on the top kind of like the Hollow Suns. I actually think these are probably made by Hollow Sun or the same company that makes those because they're the features are identical, the battery life is identical, all that stuff. And every time they come out with one, Primary Arms comes out with someone strikingly similar. So I believe uh, this is pretty much a Hollow Sun red dot. Um, this has uh, whatever base it came with. I'm not quite sure. I got it as a blim. Um, from primary arms for super cheap like half off Because they said the hole the mounting holes were drilled a little bit off of standard um, I guess the, the aim point t1 and h1 is the standard they're referring to um, And they usually accept uh, an, an aim point rail or mount, but this one won't um, so it came with this mount that was drilled to match the pattern um, that it came with so that's why it's technically a blim none of the internals are affected by it uh, the durability or anything like that nothing should be affected it's just the mounting holes um, so I was going to mount it on an AR anyway so it came with an AR height um, riser I don't know if it's a co-witness or one-third or absolute I should say absolute or one-third I'm not sure I can't remember um, this gun doesn't have backup sights on it anyway, so it's not that big a deal. This one does have the 50,000 hour battery because it's um, one of the advanced models. So I pretty much leave it on a medium setting um, that'll get me bright enough in the daytime and not too bright at night. I leave it on a medium setting and change it every six or seven months. 
and I just leave it on. So that way when I grab it, it's good to go. I don't have to worry about turning it on or putting it on a certain setting. And the battery hasn't died. I've never had to change a dead battery. Let's put it that way. So I keep them changed out every six or seven months. Um, the upper, as you can see, this is a ballistic advantage upper. Um, I think it came with a the barrel. There was like a bundle for Black Friday. Last year, you could buy a whole bunch of parts and pieces and you get a free upper. So I took advantage of that. Got a free ballistic advantage upper. The uh, mark on it, if you can see, is like the, the split A or like the H with the diamond on top. I don't know what you call that, but that's the forging mark. Um, you know, if you want to do research on AR receiver forgings, you can go for it. Uh, it's not that big a deal to me. The lower parts kit, I think um, it's probably a Palmetto State lower parts kit. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, it might be a mixture of a bunch of, like the little detents and all that stuff. It probably came from all kinds of things. The trigger, I'm pretty sure, is a Palmetto State trigger. Because that's what was in my rifle, my 16-inch rifle. And then I got a ALG um, ACT trigger for it. So I put that, the Palmetto trigger in here. Yeah, so all, a lot of the little parts are probably Palmetto parts. They might be some ALG parts. I'm not sure. They're probably all the same. The grip is the Magpul. Um, I think it's the K2, it's the more, whichever the more vertical grip is for the, uh, the just to give your wrist a little bit better angle so when you grab it, you know, you're not, it's not like an A2 grip um, where you're all curved like that. It's the more up and down grip. I actually like this one the best. I have a BCM grip on my rifle. It's got kind of the same angle. But I actually like this one better. It just fits in the hand a little better. Maybe it's because it's got more material back here. I don't know, but I like it better. Um, right here, the law folding, law tactical folder, law folding adapter, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one is in flat dark earth. A lot of them come in black. I got this one because it was on sale at Brownells maybe. And it matched all the other stuff. And I, Never really seen anybody with a, a, a tan one, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, you split it open. You see right there, it's got the markings, made in USA, closed before firing, all that. Inside here, that's a Spikes uh, T2 buffer. It's like four, four and a half ounces, something like that. So usually this is what it looks like um, with the adapter on the back of the bolt. Uh, you can see that's the edge of the carrier right there, and this is the adapter sticking out. And when it locks in, it sticks, sticks out about that far. That's just so it can close the gap um, of the adapter, so the, you know, it'll be the same length. The buffer will essentially be hitting the bolt carrier. Um, so that's why they put the little adapter in there. It weighs like two ounces, I think, what they say on the website. This one, uh, like I said, has a uh, T2 with the two ounce, so it's about six, in, six ounces of buffer weight. Um, this one spits uh, 223 ammo, like uh, steel or stuff like that. It shoots at about four o'clock. Um, so, you know, that's pretty good, especially with the, the short barrel. That seven and a half, there's a lot of gas coming back. Uh, pretty good combo. Um, behind that, this is the shockwave uh, buffer tube. Um, I think it's, it's, it might be made by CAC, CAC Industries. It's made to go with the, uh, the shockwave pistol brace. It's got the little dimples in the bottom, so the set screw can go in. That way it won't twist around and stuff. It's got a standard, um, probably carbine recoil spring in the back. Uh, nothing fancy there. This uh, is blue because it used to be on my wife's gun. Um, she wanted it blue, so I painted it blue, and now it's not on her gun. And I just got lazy and didn't take all the paint off to go back to the original tan color. And it doesn't bother me. So if it bothers you, then you know deal with it. The sling, 
This is a, uh, a Basham sling. Um, you can find them on Facebook. I don't think he's got like an actual website, but it's got a little buckle right here. Uh, come apart. It's got some a uh, little bit of a little bit of bungee built in right there. Um, yeah, it's a pretty uh, pretty slick little one point sling. Um, you know, it's it's stitched up pretty good. It's got the QD right here, so that goes into the QD slot on the bottom of the uh, the wall tactical folder clicks in like that so yeah you can see um, that's how that would go um, I haven't decided if I want to keep the one point on here or go with a two point uh, this one's working pretty good but one thing you got to worry about with single point slings and shorter guns is when you transition um, and you let this one go, you have to be careful because when it comes down, it's going to be aimed right at the doober -doo. Um If you have it set up low enough, it can smack you in the doober -doo, or it's just going to be pointed at it the entire time. Um, so, you know, there's the whole single point, two point thing. Um, having a single point on a shorter one, you just have more to worry about, different things to consider. So I haven't decided. I don't like attaching a sling to this. Just because I don't think it's mounted very sturdily. Sturd? That's a word. It's not mounted very well to the tube. So I don't like putting a sling on that. So either way, it's going to mount here. Uh, if I had a two-point, it would you know, mount here and up here somewhere on the rail. But um, for right now, I'm rocking the single point. I usually keep a 20-round mag just because it keeps the profile a little shorter from here to here. So when I uh, fold it and pack it in a bag or something, I don't have the extra mag sticking out. And I do usually keep um, another P mag with 30 rounds in it, in the bag, whatever bag I'm toting with it. If it's not in a bag, I'll swap and put this one in here. These are 55 grain gold dot, uh, spear gold dot, 55 grain soft points. Um, my theory behind that, um, which I could be wrong with, my theory for now is that the velocity out of this gun is uh, lower than you would like it to be. So my theory is the soft points will work better than a full metal jacket at the lower velocity because a full metal jacket requires a certain amount of feet per second to hit and tumble and break apart. So um, the soft tip should help at the lower velocity to do what it's supposed to do, expand. It's not supposed to break apart like that. It's supposed to expand and mushroom. So that's why I've got um, gold dot soft points in here. If that's a terrible idea, um, let me know in the comments. Um, you know, let me know if you think it's a good idea, terrible idea, whatever. Or if you have another round that you think would be better out of a seven and a half inch, uh, let me know that. I'm open to anything. I'm not super set in my ways. I'll, I'll change. Uh, I'll change my setup if I need to. If I find a better way, which I think we all should do with, um, you know, with everything. Um, anyway, yeah, this is what I keep it in. This G-code uh, Scorpion soft shell with the paddle attached on the back. That way. Um, you know, if it's a situation I have to grab this out of a bag or something like that, it's a pretty crappy situation and it's happening pretty quick and I don't have time to unthread my belt and put a mag holder on. So this one, I can just grab it, slide it on my belt and I've got an extra 30 ready to go. And this little chest rig back here, it's just got a few, it's got three mags, three rifle mags, uh, some medical stuff. That's a, should have a pistol mag in there. Don't really know where it's at, but I'll get one in there. Um, yeah, it's just a little chest rig. I keep, um, I keep with this sometimes. Uh, you know, that way you got a little more, a little more firepower, a little more ammo. So yeah, there it is. Um, that's my seven and a half inch with the folding stock. Um, to kind of go over again, the important parts, seven and a half inch ballistic advantage barrel. Call Valley Muzzle Device, Enforced Light, um, Palmetto Bolt Carrier, Primary Arms Red Dot, 
uh, mil spec trigger, um, T2 buffer, and Magpul grip, P mags, steel mags that'll run anything, um, and the shockwave blade pistol brace. All right, guys. Um, hope you liked that video about the seven and a half inch AR and all the parts and pieces that went into making it. So um, now's the end of the video. Go ahead, you know, do the all, click all the buttons, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.